Let the eggs be boiled five minutes, then peel. Wipe them dry, cut them in halves, dip them in batter, and fry them of a light brown color. Serve them up with stewed spinach under, with a strong cullis and the essence of ham mixed with it. it. Sounds complicated, we're gonna do it anyway. Thanks for joining us as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. We're joined today by our great friend, Michael Dragu. Welcome to the kitchen, Michael. Thank you very much. He's brought us, I don't know how, like three recipes we're gonna glue together or something. I don't know what, what well, are we cooking? We're gonna try to glue them together. It's hard eggs fried. When you didn't think a hard boiled egg could be any worse for you, we're about to make it so. I can't wait. This one's, I think it's gonna be good. This episode is brought to you by Michael Dragu's new cookbook. Colonial Comfort Foods. You'll be able to find it September 16th on our website. We'll make sure to put a link down in the description section. Michael, tell us a little bit about your new cookbook. Sure, it's uh, combining my heritage, my past, with the foods those folks ate on those different locations. In my case, French, English, colonies. I encourage you to do the same. That's what this book does. It, it, mine are, are suggestions, it's about 75 recipes, but no matter where you're from, you can do the same thing. Both recipes that we're doing today you will find in this cookbook along with many, many others, so make sure to check out that link. So I read the first recipe, but this is a combination of a couple of different recipes. Yes. So what's the second recipe and how do they go together? It's a, a batter for frying. It's a 200-year-old beer batter recipe. Okay. And we need to make that batter to be able to fry the hard-boiled eggs in it. Okay. So how do we get started with it? I can read you the recipe. It's pretty simple. Take four ounces of best flour sifted, a little salt and pepper, three eggs, and a gill of beer. Beat them together with a wooden spoon or a whisk for 10 minutes. Let it be of good thickness to adhere to the different articles. So you come together with two different recipes. If right. we just use the first one, how would we do it? Well, it's suggested batter, you know, right. for frying, and there were lots of choices, and mm -hmm. I, there could have been bland ones. I picked right. one that had a couple more Ingredients, um, beer, <laughs> You're right. the, okay. I stopped as soon as I saw beer. Um, salt and pepper and flour, that's it. Right, so this just perks it up a little bit. It perks it up, it's, it's wonderful. Let's get started. Okay, our first step is just getting the spinach ready. I've already washed it, I've, I've uh, picked the stems off. I'm gonna introduce it into boiling water. I've added some salt and a little beef broth. They call it collis, and I made some collis and used it, but if you have beef broth, that will work as well. We're just going to give that spinach a little extra oomph. I stirred it up until it was just wilted. I strained it and then I took it off right away and got it cool because I didn't want it to keep cooking. I didn't want it to be slimy. I didn't want it to be raw. I just wanted it to be freshly stewed. Okay, we've got our eggs cut. We're gonna introduce them into the batter and then we're gonna put them in the lard. The lard is heating it as we speak. Reminds me of the scotch eggs recipe, the first, <laughs> first recipe yes. that we oh, did together. Oh, way back. Like a million years I was younger ago. and... And I think we should have... So much slimmer. <laughs> ...deep fried them at the time. We did, yeah, we, we didn't. pan fried them and it, it would have been so much better. Nope, I have since done the deep frying much more often than yeah. the pan frying. I can't stop from getting a flat spot on the sausage yeah, yeah, when, I'm, just... when I'm turning them so.
I guess it's time to try these out, yep. right? Yep. yep. So, yep. who do you think is going to be eating uh, eating something like this? I think it's tavern fair. I think yeah. a public house. Yeah. That's fine. And it's a side. You know, they had all these different sides. They have a whole section of the cookbook that is just sides mm -hmm. to support mm -hmm. other meals. It's extraordinarily good. Mm. That batter mm. works out really good with that with that egg. The beer. I taste it. Um, you could use an ale. Mm. A hard, a hearty, you know, something darker. Maybe but not so bitter or whatever as, uh, as the, right. Yeah. And the salt and pepper is to taste. Um, I'm good with this, but if you wanted you more could, salt, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I uh, wouldn't go far as to put nutmeg in it, but some, some of us might. So. You know, I'm thinking. <laughs> oh. Give me that. It wouldn't be right. That's true. It oh. would not be right. <laughs> I think this that's the way. That's the way to go. Let's find out. You find out. Gee, that was the missing component. We should add that into your cookbook. You should add that into your version. I don't like spinach, but I, I like this spinach. I think the spinach is just there for looks. Yep. You know, it's like, well. Except it's simmered in, um, um, in essence, a salt and beef broth. Oh, so yeah. it absorbs the, those tastes. So it's not, if you don't like spinach, um, bring it out just as soon as it's blanched and uh, cool it immediately or stop it from cooking. Um, but it tastes much different than, than spinach. That for all, oh, if, yeah. I'm, if I was blindfolded, that could be cabbage with that beef and salt taste. Mm -hmm. I don't know it's spinach. So it's well worth trying that at least. So these two recipes came right out of Michael's new cookbook. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, sure. I, I think it's important for us to connect with our past and seeing a piece of paper with rectangles and lines on it is a way to see whom your ancestors were and where they were from. But celebrating them in a more of a 3D or tactile manner, I think is, is something we all could get something out of. Whether you came from Ethiopia or Ecuador or China or the western steppe of Russia, it doesn't matter. You can go back in time and whatever far, however far you can go back and research and find what hapless mammals were hoofing around there and what was growing out of the ground and find those recipes. Get your family together and at, at some religious or some, some holiday, some birthday, some celebration and make a couple of these dishes in honor of those relatives. Some of those folks gave everything so that someone they'd never meet, you, would have a chance to have a better life. They gave their lives many times, leaving everything they knew to be able to try for something better, so. We talk a lot here on the channel about connecting with history through food. So it's, it's our way to connect with another culture, which is in a time period before us, right? And this is, this is perfect. The idea that we can connect with ourselves, our culture, our own history by going back and looking at the food of our ancestors. So tremendous job. Thank you for coming along as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century.